Hello guys, this is Shwebya Group. Our today's question is uh, Vogel Company. It's a June 2014 question, question number three. Let's first read its requirements. Okay, the first one, discuss the possible reasons why company may have switched its strategy of organic growth to one of the growing by acquiring companies. Okay, in this part, actually, we have to write about the pros, the benefits of growth through acquiring company means inorganic growth or growth through acquisition. So this discussion is all about the growth through acquisition. We have to write the advantages of growth through acquisition in comparison with the organic growth. We can about, write about that organic growth is slow, growth through acquisition is quick and by acquiring some other company we can quickly enter into some specific market some new technology uh, some growth we can acquire some growth company so this is all about writing the benefits of growth through acquisition in comparison with the organic growth okay B part discuss the possible actions Google company could take to reduce the risk so this one is the first part of this question. The possible actions Google company could take to reduce. Okay, we have to take some actions to reduce the risk. And what are the risks? Risk that acquisition of Tory company fails to increase shareholder value. What is risk? That if the acquirer acquires a target company and it will fail to increase the wealth of shareholders. Means the merger, the acquisition, will flop the merger will not generate any benefit so what are the dangers that merger may fail we do not have to write about the dangers we have to write about the possible actions that how can we overcome those dangers so if we know the dangers automatically we can write about the possible actions that how can we reduce those dangers like possible problem is valuation risk you can write about that company should employ some expertise some experts and employ some proper method like free cash flows uh, take some reasonable assumptions to forecast the cash flows and to take the uh, uh, to by taking the present value future cash flows and to calculate the market value other risk may be the integration risk. There, there can be some problems of integration of two companies. So company can company should take some effective measures to reduce those problems. So you can write about all the actions to overcome those risks. So first of all, you have to think about the dangers. Then you have to write about the possible actions. Okay, the C part. Estimate showing all relevant calculation. The maximum premium Vogel company could pay. Vogel is the acquirer, is the name of acquirer. The maximum premium Vogel company could pay to acquire Tory company. Explaining the approach taken and any, any assumption made. By reading the question, it is quite obvious that examiner is asking about the synergy benefits. Because the synergy benefits or the maximum premium payable are both are the same. And how can we calculate the synergy benefits or the maximum premium payable? By calculating the combined value and by deducting the individual values from the combined values. Obviously, if the combined value is greater than the individual value, that means uh, that the difference uh, would call synergy, and that synergy is the maximum premium we as an acquirer can pay to the target company. Okay, let's let's read, read about the scenario. It's, it's a Vogel company, it's a listed engineering company, manufactured large scale plant and machinery for industrial companies. Until 10 years ago, company pursued a strategy of organic growth. Since then, it has followed an aggressive policy of acquiring smaller engineering companies, which it feels have developed new technology and method which could be used in manufacturing process. However, it is estimated that only be between 30 to 40 percent of the acquisition made in the last 10 years have successfully increased the company's shareholder value. So you can write about this kind of risk. Why only 30 to 40 percent acquisitions are successful? Why remaining 60 percent acquisitions are not successful? Because there are some risk. So we have to identify those risks and then we have to discuss the actions 
that how can we reduce those risks. Google company is currently considering acquiring Torico, an unlisted company which has three departments. So it is an acquiring com acquiry company which has three departments. Department A manufactures machine for industrial companies. So this is similar to Vogel company. Department B produces electrical goods for the retail market. This is a different business. Smaller department C operates in the construction industry. This is quite a different uh, division. Upon acquisition, department A will become part of the Vogel as it contains the new technology which Vogel company is seeking. Department B and C will be unbundled. That, that means you will you will uh, separate these departments from the rest of the business with asset attached to C sold and department B being spun off into the new company. So we will dispose of the department C and we will sell, we will separate the department B and we will make it a separate listed company. That, that, that step is called spin off. Okay, this is the income statement of Vogel company. Pre-tax profit is given and most importantly, PB, PBDIT is given profit before depreciation interest and tax. So we will have to deduct the depreciation in order to calculate the PBIT. Okay, non current assets are given, current assets are given, secured, 7% secured bond is given, the Torico, other non current and current liabilities are given, share capital, reserves are given. Okay, share of current and non current assets are, proportions are given, share of PBDIT and pre tax profit is given. First two lines are for the department C. It is estimated that for department C, realizable value of its non-current asset is 100% of their book value. But its current assets realizable value is only 90% of their book value. Costs related to closing the department C are estimated to 3 million. Fund raised from the disposal of Department C will be used to pay off Tory company other non-current and current liabilities. Okay, that means from the structure, it is quite identifiable that we have to value this company, this part of the VN using, no, using net asset method. So remember, what are the parts of net asset method? First of all, Okay, Department C. Department C. Okay, take the non-current assets. Total non-current assets are 98.2. And our share are is 20%. So if we take 98.2 into point into point two, this is 19.64. Okay, what about the current assets? Current assets are 46.5. And its share is also 20%. But remember, current assets it is realizable is only of the 90% of their value. Non-current asset is of 100% of their value. That's why I haven't do any adjustment here. But the current asset is realizable only for 90%. So you will take 46.5 into 20% into 90%. That is 8.37. Okay. Second adjustment, the fund raised from the disposal of the department C will be used to pay off Tory other non-current and current liability and that is 20.2 and there is disposal cost of 3 million. So net value will be Okay, this is 4.81. That is the benefit of Department C. Okay, let's move to the
Next adjustment. 7% unsecured bond will be taken over by the net company. It can be assumed that current market value of the bond is equal to its book. 7% unsecured bond will be taken over by the net company. This is, this is a new company. It can be assumed that current market value of the bond is equal to its book value. So this 7% so this unsecured bond, 40 million will be transferred to the net company. At present, 10% of the department B PBDIT come from sales made to department C. So if we sold department C, definitely we will lose 10% of the PBDIT of the department B. Next company cost of capital is estimated to be 10%. It is estimated that in the first year of operation, Edge Company free cash flow to the firm. Okay, we have to value this company using FCFF. Will grow by 20% then by 5.2% annually thereafter. Tax rate is 20% and company can claim 10% 10, 10 tax allowable depreciation on its non-current asset. It can assume that amount of tax allowable depreciation is the same as the investment needed to maintain Next company operations. If ever this statement is given in exam, that means you have to apply the free cash flow methodology, depreciation, and the capex are same. We do not have to add back the depreciation. Neither we don't have to do. We don't have to deduct the capital losses because both are same. So the next is Department B. Department B, its PBDIT is actual PBDIT is 37.4 and its share is 40%. 37.4 into 40%. It is equal to 14.96. Okay, loss of Profit ten percent of it and it's ten percent is one point five. Why we are deducting this one point five? Because we have we have sold the department C, therefore we will not earn the previous ten percent income. Okay, now deduct the depreciation. Depreciation was it was 10% tax allowable depreciation on its non current assets. Okay, but about non current assets, total are 98.2 and our share is 40%. So 98.2 and our share is 40% and the depreciation is 10%. 98.2 into 40% into 0.1. So depreciation is 3.93. So deducted PB. IT will be 14.96 minus 1.5 minus 3.93 it is 9.53 and what about the tax tax is 20 percent if I correctly remember okay tax is yes tax is 20 percent 1.91 we do not have to add back the depreciation because it is equivalent to the capex so fcff is equal to 7.62 so let's make a performer year one and year two onwards fcff Okay, in first year, cash flow will increase with a growth of 20%, then 5.2% thereafter. So let's let's increase 7.62 by 20%. 7.62 into 1.2. This is 9.14. And then 9.14 into 1.052 divided by 0 0.10 minus 0.052. Discount factor is 10%, that is 0 0.909 and 0 0.909. Okay, the answer is 
and this will be 9.14 into 1.052 divided by 0 0.048 into 0 0.909 182.1 plus 8.31 it will be approximately market value of business 190 million and market value of debt was 40 million so the equity value is net value equity value 150 million dollar that's that's how you will solve this part okay let, let, let's move to the question next next adjustment Vogel company current share price is three dollar the acquirer current share price is three dollar and it is estimated that Tory company PE ratio is 25 percent higher than the Vogel PE ratio and after the acquisition, when department A becomes part of the Vogel company, it is estimated that Vogel P ratio will increase by 15%. So group P ratio is given. That means we have to calculate the combined market value using earning based model. And it will be confirmed by reading the next adjustment. It is estimated that combined company annual after tax earning will increase by 7 million. So there is a lot of material given about the earnings so that 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 means we have to calculate the combined market value using earning base model so let, let's read the part Vogel company share price is Vogel price is three okay Vogel EPS is let's calculate its CPS Vogel profit is 158.2 it's a before tax we've calculated its after tax value and the number of shares are 380 million 190 divided by 0 0.5 158.2 it's after tax value divided by 380 million so what is the EPS 158.2 into after tax divided by 380 this will be 0 0.33 and Vogel PE ratio will be 3 divided by 0.33 it is 9 okay the Tory PE ratio is 25 percent higher than the Vogel PE ratio okay the Tory PE ratio will be Tory PE ratio is higher than 25 percent it will be 11.25 and the P ratio after acquisition P ratio of group after obviously after acquisition is 15% higher 9 into 1.15 it is 10.35 okay now let's calculate the combined market value using combined earnings so let, let's calculate the combined earnings let's take the earnings of Vogel what is the earning of Tory company It's 23 before tax and we just have to calculate the share of department A. Twenty-three into point eight into point five plus the synergy benefits and it is seven million. Okay, let's calculate the total value 158.2 into 0.7 sorry 158.2 
into 0.8 then 23 into 0.8 into 0.5 142.76 let's calculate combined market value by multiplying the combined earnings with the group P ratio that was 10.35 10.35 okay the combined market value is 1477 this is without department B and C okay that was the value of department B and C is 154.81 so the total value will be 1632 1632.38 this is the combined value now deduct the existing values Deduct the Vogel company value. Vogel company value was three dollar per share. If I correctly remember, yes, three dollar per share. Into three eighty. So 1140 and Tory company value was 11.25 is the P ratio into earnings when we multiply the P ratio with the earnings we can calculate the market value 207 so what are the synergy benefits Two eighty five, approximately two eighty five million dollar. So two eighty five million dollar is the synergy benefits. That's the benefit which Vogel Company can take, can earn from the acquisition of Tory Company. So this is the synergy benefits. Synergy benefits. To Vogel Company shareholders. Let's both let, let's take an assumption that it was written in, in it was written in an exam that we will have to pay twenty percent premium to the Tory Company shareholders. Let's suppose there is there was adjustment in the question that we have to pay twenty percent premium to the Tory Company shareholders. So, Tory company value is 207 and its 20% will be 41.4. So, we have to deduct that 41.4 in order to calculate the net benefit to the Vogel company shareholder, and that was equivalent to approximately 244 million dollars. Then, the synergy benefits of Vogel company shareholders or the net benefits. To the Vogel Company shareholders was 244 million. But now the complete 285 million benefits will accrue to the Vogel Company shareholders, and this is the maximum premium we can pay over the value of the Tory Company in order to acquire the Tory Company. Okay. Okay, now let, let's move to its first part. We have discussed the third part. Let's move to this first part and then second part. Let, let's read the answers. Okay, what was the first part? Discuss the possible reason why Vogel Company may have switched its strategy of organic growth to one of the growing by acquiring companies. Okay, Vogel Company may have switched its switched from a strategy of organic growth to one of the growth by acquisition if it was of the opinion that such a change would result in increasing the value 
obviously it's a common sense whenever we switch the strategy uh, the definite purpose is to increase the wealth of shareholders acquiring a company to gain access to new products we can directly we we have access to the new products new market technologies expertise it will be a quicker process maybe less costly horizontal acquisition may help vocal company eliminate key competitors and enable it to take advantage of economies of scale vertical acquisition may help company to secure the supply chain and maximum maximize its return organic growth may take a longer time and can be expensive because of the time otherwise it may be cheaper because but because of the longer time it may prove expensive and you will be out of competition and there will be a little competitive advantage organic growth especially into a new area would lead to managers to gain knowledge and expertise of an area or function which they are not currently familiar with furthermore in a saturated market there may be a little opportunity for organic growth because market is already saturated and you you will take a very long time to to build some expertise so definitely you cannot get some competitive advantage okay next is next part let's read the next part answer discuss the possible reasons discuss the possible actions vogel company could take to reduce the risk that acquisition of tory company fails to shareholder value so we have to identify what are the dangers of what are the dangers of merger acquisition the flop show of merger acquisition and how can we and what are the different actions we can take to reduce those dangers okay let, let's read the answer vocal company can take the following actions to reduce the risk of the acquisition failure since vocal company has pursued an aggressive policy of acquisition it needs to determine whether or not this has been too aggressive and detailed assessment have been undertaken company should ensure that valuation is based on a reasonable input figures reasonable input figures and proper due diligence of the perceived benefit is undertaken prior to the offer being made so we have to do a very good planning a very detailed due diligence before making any offer often it is difficult to get an accurate picture of the target when looking at it from the outside so that's why we have to do the detailed due diligence source of synergy need to be properly assessed to ensure that they are achievable like 7 million should be achievable and what action company needs to undertake to ensure their achievement this is especially so for a revenue based synergy an assessment of the impact of the acquisition on the risk of the combined company needs to be undertaken to ensure that acquisition is not considered in isolation but as a part of the whole company maybe if we acquire that company we may not acquire we may not get those benefits so benefits or synergies should be seen in context of the whole company the board of director of vogel company needs to ensure that there are good reason to undertake the acquisition and that the acquisition should result in increase in value for the shareholders so there should be some good reasons to acquire the company research studies into merger and acquisition have found that often companies are acquired not for the shareholder benefit but for the benefit or the self interest of the company's management that point should be should be evaluated non executive directors should play a crucial role in ensuring that acquisition are made to enhance the value for the shareholder it's it should not be for the personal interest of the management okay a post completion audit may help to identify the reasons procedure need to be established to ensure that acquisition is not overpaid company should determine the maximum premium it is willing to pay and not go beyond that figure there should not be any winning curse research indicates that often too much is paid to acquire a company and the resultant strategy benefits are not sufficient to cover the premium pay often this is a result of the management of acquiring company wanting to complete the deal deal at any at any cost this is winning curse to not go with the winning curse attitude we 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 just have to uh, make it sure that if we are if the bid is going above the maximum premium level we should not go for the bidding process acquiring company management may also want to show that costs related to undertaking due diligence and initial negotiation have not been wasted 
Google company and its management need to guard against this and maybe formal procedure need to be established which allow managers to step back without loss of personal reputation. Google company needs to ensure that it has proper procedure in place to integrate the staff. So there should not be any integration problems and in the system. And also recognize that such integration takes time. Company may decide instead to give the target company a large degree of autonomy and thus make integration less necessary. However, this may result in a reduction in synergy benefits. Companies should also have strategies which allow it sufficient flexibility when undertaking integration so that it is able to respond to changing circumstances or respond to inaccurate information prior to acquisition. So you should be flexible. You should give some time and you should give some autonomy in order to reduce the integration problems. Google company should also be mindful that its own and acquired company staff and management need to integrate and ensure a good working relation between them. The most important note that above answer covers more areas than would be needed to achieve full marks. Credit will be given for alternative rel relevant comments. Like you can write about the danger of regulatory risk, disclosure risk, valuation risk, HR problem, integration problems, and these are the common risk. These are the common problems of failure of merger and acquisition. So we have to take some actions in order to reduce this risk. So this was the June 2014 attempt question. This, this was a very attempt question. Hopefully you, you people, you all people have get some important points. Thank you so much.